Good evening, gospel revolutionaries around the world. This is Michael Lilborn Williams coming to you uh, once again, live from the bonus room above my sister's garage. I'm dirty. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yes, thank you for all the happy birthday wishes. I really do appreciate it. Uh, I've uh, My phone's been ringing. I've been getting... Uh, text and emails, and um, I really, really do appreciate the thoughts. They're absolutely wonderful. Uh, 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 being this age, and no, age is not just a number. A number is just a number, and age is... <laughs> I see that lady all the time. I try to really hard to put the mute on when she comes on every time for the Boost commercial. Uh, age is just a number and mine is unlisted. Well, no, a number is just a number. Let's stop getting things confused. <laughs> uh, so far, so good. Uh, surviving uh, COVID recently uh, for about five weeks. Uh, the only thing that I can tell you is that uh, I'm grateful to be here. And uh, I just yesterday went in for an evaluation and oh, Boy, I found out where I actually am, even though I feel well, uh, it definitely had some effects on me. Uh, I still deal with a bit of uh, what they call brain fog, I suppose, and um, I try to blame it on my age and everything else, but I think there's a little bit of this that's a little extra, so pardon me if I have a little bit of um, difficulty getting through some of this. And if I don't, you know, hey, we'll just blame it on the Holy Ghost, all right? Uh, there's uh, something that we really do need to cover. Last week, I went into some detail <clears throat> about the fact that if you don't believe Moses, you can't believe what Jesus had to say. I was pretty emphatic about that, wasn't I? I want to be more emphatic about it this time. Uh, because there's two views uh, in the New Testament that has created a divergence away from uh, the scriptures uh, and uh, uh, into the scriptures and away from the scriptures. And it's really interesting uh, that much of the same uh, verses that have caused people to totally throw the scriptures out the door, um, you know, and uh, uh, the law, the Psalms and the prophets that, that Jesus said, that if you're going to understand him, you need to really rely on the scriptures. And uh, we have our mystic friends who say that just absolutely is ridiculous. Uh, so they quote a verse and we quote a verse. So what I want to do is to quote both verses and try to put them in their context. Uh, there's more verses than just the one against the one. So... <clears throat> this uh, particular session is probably going to run over 15 minutes, but you're kind of used to that already. And uh, but we do want to see about this and the two views that we're want that we are going to compare and juxtapose them. Hopefully, is if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Now that seems to be the uh, dump everything else. Don't believe anything that the prophets had to say. Don't believe anything Moses had to say. Or don't believe that God actually gave the law to Moses. It came through Moses uh, or came by Moses. But we're going to show you that all of that has been debunked thoroughly. Uh, now, I'm not trying to reach these teachers. Because once you have put your neck out on the line and written a whole new Bible about a subject that's not in the Bible. <laughs> uh, you can't turn around. I, but you can because I did. Uh, I turned around from Word of Faith doctrine and uh, lost everything, lost uh, all the prestige, all of the accolades, all of the money. Money's gone. Bye bye. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I know you can. But it's uh, having the willingness to do so when confronted with the truth, but they're not watching my videos, so don't don't be concerned about that, uh, and we're not trying to change their minds, but we are changing the minds of many people who are listening to them 
and who venture to listen to us occasionally. And that we're very happy about. Uh, because we, uh, I am completely persuaded that this narrow view, they call it a lens, and then when we talk to them about having to look at the gospel through a specific lens, they said, we don't use that term, we don't use that term. And it's like, you use a term all the time, come on. <laughs> so um, uh, in looking at this, so the first one we're going to look at is the one that we looked at uh, last week, as is my want to haunt, is that we do recaps. And, uh, but we are going to start with one that we did not include last week because Daniel texted me this one just yesterday and I thought, got to use that one. Uh, so I just, and I'm wanting to incorporate both of these passages to show you, and it's not just here, my goodness, uh, we could not exhaust the places where the emphasis is placed on the necessity for the scriptures. The scriptures are profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, and righteousness uh, uh, to, uh, to make sure that we focus on the scriptures. It's what the scriptures have to say, the Hebrew scriptures, the Hebrew scriptures over and over and over again. Yet this statement about if you've seen the Father, you've seen me, uh, now, it's in there more than one time, uh, but we're going to look at those times in their context. And uh, But first off, we're going into these first couple of verses, but you've got to realize that uh, these two views live in the same universe. They even exist in the very same uh, uh, New Testament book. The book of John uh, contains both of these types of statements. Uh, if you don't believe Moses, you can't believe me. And also, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So that's the divergence. And let me tell you, boy, when you choose one over the other, wow. It, uh, it is amazing that people could totally dump the entire Old Testament, except when they find a verse that agrees with them. Now, uh, we here at the Gospel Revolution have committed ourselves to the Hebrew Scriptures, because Jesus said to do that. So, <laughs> so we really do take everything that we say and compare it to the scripture. We take everything Paul said and Peter, James, and John, uh, what the book of Acts says. We take all of that and we uh, our uh, acid test, if you will, is the Hebrew scriptures. And so far, it's not failed us. But let me tell you just a little bit about what we've come up with by doing that this fact. There is no such thing as sin. There, Everybody has been made righteous. Uh, everybody is holy and acceptable in God's sight. That uh, the uh, end of the world came 2,000 years ago, and that there is no prophecy of the scriptures that tells about another coming. The second coming that's spoken of is listed in Hebrews when it says that Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he came a second time without sin unto salvation. So we've been able to go through and just bulldoze because these things are not in the scriptures. We've gone back and we've looked at um, the prophet Daniel and the 70th week of Daniel and how, man, I'm telling you how that Christianity to try to incorporate a second coming in has completely distorted this uh, 70th week of Daniel. And they say that 69 weeks brought us up to the cross and since then it's been put on hold. <laughs> time means something when it's a time-sensitive prophecy. And uh, believe me, Daniel's prophecy was time-sensitive and it had it all laid out. And it reveals that the 70th week of Daniel actually was fulfilled at the cross. Everything's done. Righteousness is here. Sin's been destroyed. Transgression has been done away with. I'm telling you, it's time to just shout and have a good time now. Uh, so uh, to arrive at some of these points, some of them, but they're not as clear and not as inclusive and uh, powerful even when you look at it through the narrow view of if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It just doesn't come across that clear. Uh, there, there's a lot of things that are vague. They get very hyper about their intentions, 
But the fact is that it leaves a lot of things. There's still sin to deal with because sin is a perspective. Sin was never, and, 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 and so now you're still dealing with sin. Uh, in the gospel that is presented by uh, Mike Williams Ministries in the Gospel Revolution, there is no such thing as sin. Uh, Adam's transgression, nor the transgression of the law, all of that was wiped out in Christ. Man, if you aren't just shouting by now, there's no need to make continuing. But I hear some shouting going on back there. <laughs> Maybe my giraffes there in the corner. Um so uh, this is the thing. I've been looking for several years for the exit. Where was the exit? Where did these guys get off? Because I've got personal friends who are very supportive of the ministry and of me personally and friends. And for some reason, learning this new doctrine means they can't be my friend anymore. And I, I, I don't like that. It's like, show me that I don't mind that you believe differently than I do, but why is it that you have to do it in secret? Why is it that you have to do it surreptitiously? Why is it that you have to no longer be friends anymore? Uh, I refuse to believe there's something wrong with them. I think there's something wrong with the doctrine. And uh, uh, I still count them as friends. Uh, and it's not just one person, but we've had uh, only two or three that have gone this direction. Um, but it, uh, it causes, it has caused, I don't say that it always causes, but it causes people to disconnect from anybody who thinks differently than that, even on Facebook. So like we have Andre Rabe, we have uh, Global Grace and Mirror Bible that all have access to our Facebook. But when we tag something to them, uh, number one, uh, we got blocked thoroughly and resoundingly from Global Grace uh, 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 probably three years ago. And uh, they're just not willing to hear uh, or allow anything to be posted that diverges from what their opinions are. And uh, then Mirror Bible, man, we try to tag something to that. And I, my staff has told me immediately when we tag it to it, bam, it's gone. <laughs> so, uh, but as you can see, uh, uh, Mirror Bible posts on our site all the time. We don't take any of their stuff down. We don't take anything down from uh, that these guys post. And some of them just deliberately don't post on our site uh, because it gets a reaction. And it should. I, I, I'm, I'm uh, perplexed at the thought that spirituality somehow means that we should not reason these things and we shouldn't question these things. I love being questioned about what I teach and why I teach it. And um, I, then there's people who just uh, simply don't have any questions. But uh, that all laid aside, let's start into this because I've already eaten up a great deal of time. So uh, our first uh, one that we're going into, and this is to reaffirm what I taught last week, but I also want to read here in Luke chapter 16, verse 30 and 31. Uh, and he said, nay, father Abraham, but if one uh, went unto them from the dead, they will not believe. And he said unto them, if they had heard Moses and the prophets, and they said, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Oh, do you get it? It's important to have confidence in the Hebrew scriptures. It's important that even raising from the dead does not count. And, and if you hear these guys uh, teach, Raising from the dead, death, burial, and resurrection was not even necessary. Uh, it's, it can be exasperating to hear people who have trusted in the work of the cross all of their lives and then in their later years just throw it completely out because somebody said that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Therefore, Everything that you believe about the Father has to be defined through me, even though we see Jesus getting angry. And But they try to synthesize that and say, no, he didn't, no, he didn't, no, he didn't. Well, if you make a scourge of cords, well, there's no place that says he used it. It's like, come on. 
what was it for? I just to intimidate. I, I don't know. It says he drove them out of the temple. I, <laughs> and he drove them out with a scourge of cords. Anyway, we'll leave that one to the side right now. Uh, but trying to prove that Jesus was never angry is a fool's errand, that's for sure, because Jesus did get angry during his ministry. That aside, as I said, uh, it's uh, uh, made very clear here by Jesus that if you don't believe Moses, that there's no way that even if one raised from the dead, they're not going to be able to believe. Uh, there is something about the understanding of this. Now, our, my friend, uh, um, Ethan uh, Massengill, uh, who's stationed uh, in Northern Italy right now with the Air Force, he's doing research into the word testimony. And he can't find anybody's got one except God. <laughs> and it starts out in the Old Testament with the testimony that's in the ark. That's what all of it is about in the Old Testament. The testimony was the Ten Commandments that were in the ark, the, uh, the uh, uh, rod of Aaron that budded, and uh, uh, the things that were in the ark were the testimony. That was the testimony of God. And then when you get into the New Testament, the only real testimony is God's testimony still. But you see, we've gotten obsessed with our testimony, just like we've gotten obsessed with our righteousness and everything else. The, if you want to know somebody's testimony, listen to God's testimony. And God's testimony is listen to Moses. <laughs> listen to the prophets because I spoke to them and through them for a purpose. It'll keep you in understanding of the fullness of the work of the Christ. Remember last week I shared with you, if you minimize Moses, you minimize Jesus. And, and the fact is, the proof is in the pudding. They have minimized Moses and they have minimized Jesus. Jesus is simply a revealer. The other verse I wanted to uh, take you to uh, is the one I think we went into last week. And that is uh, John chapter 5. And... Uh, uh, John chapter five, where's John chapter five? Right there's John chapter five. And uh, looking at verse 46 and 47, uh, and he says, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. For he wrote of me. What are you afraid of? Why are you afraid of Moses? But if you believe not his writings, here's the powerful part. If you believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? It's not possible. There's no way you can conceive of the words or the acts or the deeds of Christ unless you do believe what Moses had to say. Jesus himself said that's the key. But you see, the guys on the other side of this in the mystic community say, oh, no, 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 no. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. So we've quoted to you these two, and, and believe me, we could just read chapter after chapter after book after book after book uh, about the incorporation of the scriptures into learning the truth about Jesus. It's This is not a sideline thing. Now, uh, the uh, issue about this, we want to give this in all fairness. We've got uh, three, four, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got five verses we want to take you to that uh, attest to the uh, doctrine of if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. But we're going to read these. We're going to read them in context, and we're going to read more. We're going to tell you more than just one. So uh, go with me now, if you will, to John chapter 1. And uh, these just bear to be repeated. Some of them you will have heard. Some of, you, some of them you may not have heard. John chapter 1, uh, verse 14 uh, through, I've got down here, John chapter 1, verse 14 through 18. All right. So, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Will you get that? <laughs> Jesus was not one of the last one since Adam to come along 
And that's what these guys are trying to teach you. It's what mere Bible tries to teach you is that Jesus was just another one from Adam on up to him. But I'm, that is not what John's account is, at least. You may disagree with John's account, but uh, John's account says that, uh, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only, of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, not just a revelation. <laughs> He is full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, uh, uh, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So they take this term, and the law was given by. Oh, it was given by Moses, by Moses. But you've got to look at these words and figure out what it's talking about. Now, there's the word by, which actually means this happened by this person. And then there's the Greek word that actually means through. So if you take a simple glance at the word by in verse 17, it is the word translated everywhere else is the word through. The law came through Moses. I I feel almost foolish having to try to establish a truth that at least this part of it has been established for so long. And But even Christianity does not accept this. Christianity doesn't believe Moses either. The mystics don't believe Moses either. We believe Moses. <laughs> and we also believe that everybody is one with God, that we, we are all one. You see, people seem to think that if you're going to come to the conclusion that there's nobody going to hell, and I know nobody's going to hell because you need to listen to Daniel uh, more on that subject. Uh, if you have any conclusion that God's not angry at all, that you have to not believe the Old Testament. You have to not believe the Hebrew scriptures. And that's a lie. It is the Hebrew scriptures that teaches how an angry God no longer was going to be angry. And Jesus even explained it himself. Now is the day of judgment. This is the day that I'm going to take it all on myself. And uh, But all of this gets thrown out. Now, what do you throw out when you throw that out? You're throwing out God's testimony. I know you've got one of how Jesus tells you everything under the sun, which way to turn it right or left at Oak Street, but you need to stop. You need to stop denigrating the testimony of God. This is God's testimony. The, the very law that was inside the Ark of the Covenant is called the testimony of God. The law, the tablets that were inside the Ark of the Covenant, I'm going to make you go back and look it up. It's real. A 20-year-old boy showed me this just a little while ago. Uh, but the Ark, uh, the, uh, the law that was inside the Ark of the Covenant is called the testimony of God. I'm not only going to tell you that, that God gave Moses the law, I'm going to tell you now that the law is the testimony of God. I don't think it would be wise to deny God's testimony. The other part of God's testimony is the cross. But you see, you guys reject the cross too because the cross didn't do anything. It didn't change anything. But let me tell you, the one who gave his testimony in the law has now given his testimony in the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And Jesus said, it is finished. Oh, but all the way from the fountain. No, no, no. Stop adding that. Every single post, which you will see, we, uh, we don't try to block mere Bible, but watch and see, read them. And you'll see that, that Francois has uh, very disrespectfully added in his translation as it always was. Everything that he will post is going to have inserted in it, which is not in the text. It's not a translation. It is uh, 
uh, uh, it, it, it's uh, not a word for word translation and it's not a thought for thought. These words and these thoughts are not in this translation of Mirror Bible. But every time I want you to watch for it because we want you to read Mirror Bible. We don't want you to throw it away. Read it. Read Francois' post when they come up. And every time they come up, you're going to see a little line somewhere in there. Inevitably, at least the last dozens I've seen, every one of them has inserted in it as it always was in some form. And uh, But let me assure you, you can go to any, get your own concordance out and look it up for yourself and see if this is in there. Now, you see, when you become so absolutely convinced that you have a view and an opinion of something spiritual, you see it's okay to lie. If you have a political view that you become so persuaded of, and I'm talking about all sides, I'm not taking any sides here, uh, uh, but if you develop a political view that is uh, something that you think is for the greater good, it's okay to lie. If you develop a spiritual view that you think, oh, it's best for everybody. It's okay to lie. That's why I've always said to be a truly good Christian, you've got to be a good liar. I guess if you're going to be a politician, you've got to be a good liar. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me on that. So, <clears throat> so here is what this issue is. Uh, the, the power of uh, knowing uh, this understanding that the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh, folks, this is important. You say, why do you keep hounding on this, Michael? Because it's important. It's, it's vitally important because this translation of mere Bible, this teaching in global grace is undermining the power of the cross. These guys have reduced Moses. They admit they reduced Moses. But what they don't realize they've done is they've reduced Christ. And that's not the way it's supposed to be, folks. Uh, I don't know why anybody gets so excited about these doctrines when they've taken Jesus and stripped completely everything from him accomplishing and changing everything. It's an old covenant. It's a new covenant. It's an old world. It's a new world. It's a new heaven. It's a new earth. How did that happen? Oh, it's just a perception change. And eh, thanks for playing. <laughs> All right, we're going to try to go on here. So that is John. And now we are going to John chapter 3. And John chapter 3, if I can get my sticky note unstuck here. John chapter 3. It's all the way back there. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 31 through 36. He that cometh from above is above all. And now this is not the words of Jesus. This is the words of John about Jesus. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. And this is Jesus' testimony. Goodness gracious, folks, are you really comfortable with rejecting the testimony of God and the testimony of Jesus so you can have a personal testimony? I don't mind you having a personal testimony, but not at the expense of throwing God's testimony away and Jesus Christ's testimony away. Come on, how self-righteous can you get? He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. If you believe Jesus' testimony, if you believe God's testimony, you have set this to your seal. You have decided God is true. Now let's look at the rest of this statement. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things unto his hand. 
He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not have life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Now, this is a process. We're in the Gospels. We're not in Paul's teaching about the conclusion. In fact, if you go to John chapter 12, you'll find out nobody believed because that was not God's way of removing God's wrath from off of the earth. That it was not through personal belief that God was going to remove wrath from the earth because that proved not to work so well either. We've done entire volumes of teachings on that. So uh, you're welcome to go back and enjoy those. Uh, but... But the point here is that uh, he, he said, if you've accepted the testimony of God, you've accepted this, this seal that God is true. And what is true about God? Outside of Jesus, wrath still abides on this earth. This is the seal. If you accept the testimony of Christ, you accept this seal that God is true. And if God is true without Christ, God's wrath remains on this earth. Now, it so happens, according to chapter 12, that God did not choose. That was a diversion, if you will. Uh, did not choose to remove his wrath off of the earth through man's belief, but through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to Jesus himself. In this same book, in John chapter uh, 10, I think it is. All right, I'm all worked up. <laughs> now let's go to John chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. John chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because not only had he broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. <laughs> and we believe that totally here. If you're equal with God, but there was no one that was equal with God except Jesus, because Jesus was the only begotten son of God. He was the only son of God. And now we've all become sons of God in Christ, and now we are all equal with God. Uh, and and this this vital point, but you see, they got mad at him because he said he was the son of God because they knew what that meant. That means, that means you're equal with God. Now, Andre Rabe got really mad at me, and this is where he blocked me <clears throat> several months ago, probably last year, when I credited him for helping me through this understanding, and he really did. He kept saying, "Father, father's never mad. Father's good. Father never did anybody wrong. Father, father, and Abba and Papa, and never did anybody bad. And uh, Papa never did anything." And I, he said it over and over, and it finally clicked on me. Andre Rabe is right. The father has never been angry with any of his sons. The father has never been angry with any of his sons. The father has never been angry with anyone since Jesus Christ brought everyone into sonship. And yes, that's male, female, barbarian, Scythian, bond and free. <laughs> All came into sonship. We're not teaching about the difference in gender here. We're teaching about the fact of being brought into sonship, a place, a position that we're in. And in that very same position in their relationship with God the Father and God the Son. and But you've got to understand, folks, that before Jesus, did we not just read at least two places, if not by the time we finish, that Jesus was at this time was the only begotten of the Father. So when Jesus says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, You've not, you didn't see your father. You're going to see what he had to say to these guys about their father here in just a little bit. It is important to note that when Jesus said, see, it is true. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. But you see, you've only seen the father in the son. <laughs> and now we can all say that. But at this point in time, 
To say that if you've seen me, you've seen the Father, was saying specifically you've seen my relationship with the Father. He was showing them what all of our relationship with the Father was going to become. But this has been whitewashed out because of this really uh, vapid doctrine that has got in about original design. And it just said, nobody in the Bible's taught it. I, I know people who read the Bible teach it, but there's nobody in the Bible who taught it. That's just a fact. Uh, then, uh, let's see, how far are we going here? Verse, uh, yeah, just verse 17 and 18. Uh, and, and there's a whole bunch that goes on on down through here, but I'll let you read that yourself. Uh, the, uh, we're going to John chapter 10, verse 14. And John chapter 10, verse 14, uh, uh, going down through 18. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. All right. <laughs> he didn't say, I'm the son and I know all my brothers. <laughs> he says, you're a sheep. But you see, you're not sheep anymore. You, you're co-heirs. You're not even sheep anymore. As the father knoweth me, uh, even so know I the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. He didn't say I lay down my life for the other sons. He said, I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also uh, I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, and that I might that I might take it again. Stop calling people killers of Jesus. Jesus made it very clear here. I, I want you to know, nobody's taking my life from me. The Jews, the Gentiles, uh, uh, all of this rap that uh, racist people put on the Jewish people, and even call them Christ killers. The book of Acts makes it very clear that it wasn't just the Jews involved. It says the Jews, the Gentiles, and Pontius Pilate. So there's authorities and then everybody else in the world because at the time there was only Jews and Gentiles and authorities, and that was it. And so according to the book of Acts, everybody killed Jesus. So just leave that garbage alone. Goodness gracious. Uh, it's the very root of racism on this planet, and there's no room for that to even exist in the heart and mind of somebody, especially who knows what the work of the cross is. Uh, he says, no man taketh it from me. Nobody took the life of Jesus. He says, uh, but I lay it down of myself. Uh, and I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it again. This commandment have I received of the Father. So what was the father's commandment? Uh, you got to go there and die. I demand that you die. The father's commandment was, you could decide. That was the father's commandment. Are you going to take up this right that I'm giving you? I'm giving you the right to lay down your life and I'm giving you the right to take it back up again. Come on, people. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Uh, it's amazing how human beings can twist things into things that help us hate each other very quickly. We would rather look at it through the eyes that would cause us to hate each other than the eyes that would cause us to love each other. And let me tell you, you building your own personal relationship with Jesus isn't going to help you love anybody. It'll help you have this sweet personal uh, ecstasy relationship that you can't really relate to anybody from except other like-mindedness. The one thing I love about the gospel revolution and those who've understood the gospel through this concept and through what is taught here, they're able to fit in anywhere. I, it just doesn't make any difference. They're able to go and just, and if necessary, just keep your mouth shut. You know, <laughs> just don't say anything. <laughs> 
Uh, we're going to John chapter 10, verse 32. And uh, we're going down through, uh, what are we doing? 32 through, well, let's just start. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shown you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we must stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. You see, uh, these guys had no concept about being sons of God because they, they thought it was blasphemy because if you're a son of God, that means you're God. <laughs> that's how much, uh, uh, that's how much sonship meant to the Jewish people. If you're the son, you're the same as the father. And uh, uh, they said, this is blasphemy. This is absolute blasphemy. The Jews answered and said, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, it is, is it not written in your law? I, I, say, I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken. Don't you get it? The scriptures can not be broken. Even Jesus said, I didn't come to break the scriptures. I didn't come here to break the law. I didn't come here uh, to do away with the law. I came to fulfill the law and the prophets. How are you going to know what Jesus did if you don't know what was fulfilled because you know what the law is and you know what the prophets say? That's the reason Jesus made the challenge. If you don't believe Moses, you'll never be able to believe me. Uh, Jesus answered and said, is it not written in your law? I said, and that's where they'd say, oh, it means in, it says in your law, not my law. Uh, but he's made it very clear that this law came from God. And this is the law, but the law that he's talking about is uh, the law they were trusting in. The law was never meant for people to trust in it for righteousness. They were supposed to find Christ through these laws. He said, if he called them gods unto whom the world, uh, the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken, Say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest, because I said, I am the Son of God. Uh, so, again, we wanted to clarify this. There are two views here that have developed. I didn't know they were developing, but I had to stop and pay attention and listen to them that there are two, they've separated these. Now see, we totally embrace the fact if you've seen uh, Jesus, you've seen the Father. We totally embrace that, but we embrace it in its context. Its context is Jesus being the only begotten Son of the Father. If you've seen Jesus, you saw the Father. You saw a Father-Son relationship, something no human being had ever seen before. <laughs> But now you know it. Now you can know it. But before that time, you could not know what a father-son relationship was because Jesus was the first and only begotten of the Father. And the scriptures cannot be broken. I don't know why that's so offensive. So, you see, we totally embrace here at the Gospel Revolution that if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. But the one thing you'll never hear these guys quoting is, if you don't believe Moses, you can't believe Jesus. But you see, both of these can live in the same universe. And they do, in fact, live in the same universe. They just have to be understood for what they were actually saying instead of what they're being used for saying. 
We're not trying to prove a point. We're trying to find truth. And Jesus said, if you're going to do that, you must rely on the law, the Psalms, and the prophets.